Hey, good morning, everybody. Sarasota Tim. I just pulled out of McDonald's. Got myself a 99 cent, any size, of course, I get large uh, coffee. But check this out. Man, I'll tell you, when I was on vacation, <clears throat> every McDonald's I went to, or Walmart, or didn't matter, gas station, everybody was uh, on their game. <laughs> Down here, they're not on their game so good. And I, I've never had much luck with this one here in Boynton Beach. Anyway, ordered a large coffee with four cream and three equal. I decided to, uh, instead of going with pure sugar, uh, to, to go equal. It's probably even worse, right? Well, anyway, I get down here. I'm heading towards a point in Inlet. going to take a little ride this morning. I'm making a video on Social Security. And uh, I, I the, the cup felt very hot. I'm like, oh, something suspect here. You know, and then I open it up because I wanted it to cool down. I didn't want to just open that little hole because it won't cool down quick enough. And I wanted a sip. They have good coffee at McDonald's. So I'm going where I'm going right now, over the bridge on uh, Woolbright Road here to A1A. And uh, sure enough, black coffee. And I'm like, man, I'm not going to drink this. I, I've drank black coffee. I've drank black, I mean, uh, cowboy coffee. But I'm not going to drink it today. So I go through the light right up here where I'm coming to now. I just, you know, left... I came over the bridge there, and I went back, and I paid with my mobile app. That's how you get it for 99 cents. And uh, I got over the thing, and I said, hey, uh, I just got a mobile order. I didn't want to yell at them or anything. I said, I ordered it with four cream and three equal. I got black coffee. Come around. <laughs> so I come around. I give them the old one. And, you know, I'm waiting there for a couple of minutes. Seemed like it took a long time. And I felt the cup. The cup was definitely a lot cooler, you know, because it had the cream in it. But it's still plenty hot. Take a big swig of it. There's not one lick of sweetener. Now, you know, if even if they didn't stir it, which they didn't, if you had equal in there, that stuff just, bam, it just lights up your coffee. You would know there's something in there, especially three of them. So it's just got cream. Now, that's stage two for me. I can drink cowboy coffee, and I can drink coffee with cream, even easier than black coffee. In fact, I don't even really mind it. So before you get into the comments on me about drinking that sweet and low stuff, equal, uh, you'll be pleased to know that I only have cream. Cruising down A1A this morning. Nothing but blue sky. I mean, palm trees, McMansions on both sides of the road. People doing their walking, a lot of cyclists. And I tell you, I, I, I recognize some of these walkers. They're Every day they're out there, every single day. There's a big lot right there that they tore down something and haven't built anything yet. There's a guy walking with a towel around him like he just got out of the shower. <laughs> so, uh, how you doing? It's the uh, day before Thanksgiving. Don't eat, don't overeat. We all do, right? And when I grew up, do you guys remember, we, we, we talked about one time about how Christmas is uh, used to be growing up. When I was growing up, Thanksgiving was, let me see if I can remember all the things I want to talk about. Part of the time growing up, we would go to, um, you know, two or three different uh, family members if they were close by. It wouldn't be friends, it would be family. And we would eat two or three times. And then most of my life, it was, uh, or the other half, growing up, we made our own dinner and people would join us. And this is what they don't do anymore that we used to do when we were young, when I was young. 
the turkey went in the oven the night before. There was no put it in the day, you know, Thanksgiving day. Now that, that thing had to cook a week. <laughs> Lady's got her a five gallon bucket and a pickup stick to pick up trash on the beach. Uh, yeah, the, the turkey went in the oven the night before. It cooked slow and low. Um, I don't know how they cooked them, so I can't tell you the, you know, the recipe, but I can tell you part of it, which I'm going to get to. But, uh, you know, they might have turned it up uh, later in the day, you know, the next day. And then the dressing every year was put in the turkey. It was stuffed in the turkey. My grandmother, my mother, they had, I remember their hands being all that goop on there as they stuffed cornbread stuffing in the turkey. And this wasn't that gooey, sticky, clumpy clay type dressing that seems to be on everybody's table these days. This had a granular uh, cornbread. It was delicious. It was it was the best stuffing. I haven't had it in years. And man, if I ever had a bite of it, I'd know it in a second. Uh, it's just, it's unforgettable, unforgettable. And then there would be more, you know, in a tray that would be baked in the oven. But there was plenty of it in that bird. And uh, all the giblets and all that stuff would come out and they'd prepare that turkey. Let's go down here and park. A little spot right here at the Boynton Inlet. I'm looking right at the waterway here. And we'll talk for a minute. And I'll finish my coffee. With my rant. <laughs> so. Let me put my coffee down. Because i got to use my hands to talk. That's why I haven't been able to talk too good. There we go. There goes a the boat. Oh, my arm hurts. Um. If you're gonna cook a ham, you gotta put the pineapples on it. Uh, I think when I grew up, we had ham for Christmas. And my mom and my grandmother, whoever cooked it, those pineapples were burnt. Not literally, but they had a good toasty brownness on them and they were tacky and juicy and made the best pineapple sandwiches you ever had in your life. When I was growing up, I shut this car off. I know it takes me forever to say something. When I was growing up, that the turkey went in the oven the night before, and then during the day, I'm talking about all day, it was basted. You had that big uh, syringe thing. My mom, my grandmother, whoever it was at the time, would suck that juice up and baste that turkey. Over and over and over and over and over. I mean, it was a real uh, project. It was a real art. I mean, that turkey came out perfect every year because it was it was cooked so slow and they stayed on top of it. You know, uh, unlike the way I cook a steak, <laughs> and it came out perfect. And that dressing, it was delicious. The the juices of the turkey and the combination of it, everything flavored up really good. And then at the end, they would open that foil because it would have foil on it. They would baste it. And then that would get browned at the very end. I think they probably turned the uh, oven up higher and they would brown that turkey. And when it was presented, it was postcard. It was burnt. I say that facetiously. That's the term I use. It was brown. It was tanned. It was toasty. It, the skin was a little bit crunchy on that bird. Oh, it was so good. Back to the ham, putting the pineapples on it. Do you ever, have you ever done that? I'm sure most of you, when you grew up, and you have to do the same thing. You probably cover it, uh, the ham. A lot of the hams today, I guess they're already cooked, right? You just heat them up. I don't know. I'm not a chef. But I can tell you that the ham, when we had the hams with the pineapples, they were, and, and we've had them with that little clove thing, you know, that sticks in there and holds them on. And it, it made a little, a little hint of a flavor 
if you got one of those in your mouth or a little bite of that pineapple and it had that, that hint, whatever those clove things are. But that ham would be brown too, but those pineapples would be so toasty and, oh yeah, that would be a good, that's a good ham. That's a good ham. I think they actually bought hams that needed to be cooked. I think today they're all done. You just heat and serve. I don't know. Kind of like that dressing. Bacon serve. Stove top. <laughs> Cooking, when I grew up, I'm going to be 65. When I, when I grew up, cooking was done homemade. There wasn't a lot of stuff like there is today on the shelf that you just add water or you just heat up and serve it. Everything was cooked from scratch. Everyone knew how to cook. Generations of people, you know, knew how it kept being passed down. I mean, biscuits, there was none of this grand biscuits. Um, I mean, you, they probably came about, you know, I remember the Pillsbury Doughboy when he started promoting them and people were like, yeah, hey, let's buy those. And they're, they're good. But I've had my share of homemade biscuits. My grandmother, she had that, uh, that cabinet, that metal cabinet, that's white with the red trim and you open the doors and her flour would be in there, a big bowl and, um, the flour, the sugar and everything that she needed. And she would take it out and she would literally pour milk or buttermilk in her giant flour bowl. She'd make a little, uh, hole there and she could roll around in all the other flour enough to make and pull that out. She didn't just add X amount of flour to, to milk or buttermilk. It was made in the, and then she could take that out. You ever heard of that? She, man, and, and uh, she would put those biscuits on a sheet and she had a crooked finger, my grandmother. She had a finger that, I guess it got cut and the skin got healed and it just couldn't up. It couldn't go up. And she used to tease me all the time when I was a little boy. I said, her name was Nanny. I said, Nanny, straighten that finger out, that old crooked finger. And it was a joke for all of our lives, you know, as a kid growing up. God bless her. She, I loved her as much as I did anybody. And she would take that crooked finger and when she would make her little biscuit, she'd give it a little roll. And then she'd just do a little with her fingers like right here and mash them and, you know, make a little round biscuit on this tray. And they'd have this little shape to them. They weren't like ideally perfect and rounded or, or you know, cut out with a cookie cutter thing. They were made homemade. She would just do it, mash it and cook it. And that that little taste, that little aftertaste of those biscuits, a little sourness, I guess it was a buttermilk or something. And we would mix syrup and honey. No, no, no. Honey and butter together. Kind of mix it up. Butter would be soft. And, uh, and we would have that uh, on the biscuit. I don't think we did gravy much. I did have gravy and biscuits and all that, but my grandmother, she did it with the uh, the honey and the butter. She lived on a farm in Alabama. Coleman, Alabama. Uh, that's where I used to go a lot when I was a kid. They raised chickens. They had a chicken house that went from here to yonder. It was a big one. I think I talked about it before. And uh, But back to the Thanksgiving, you know, we had, and then all those other dishes. Uh, let me see if I can remember. Green beans, and they were snapped, you know, cooked green beans. Uh, the mashed potatoes, when I grew up with mashed potatoes, they were mashed with one of these things. They were mashed like that. Now, Tammy, she likes to make hers with, a, you know, the blender, like a lot of people do. There's nothing wrong with it. But she'll blend them until they're, I mean, if there's one little BB size lump, it's got to come out of there. She's going to mix them things, and then you better eat them as soon as they're done. She wants them eaten when they're hot. But we mashed them. We we put the potatoes in the bowl. We put the butter and the milk or whatever, and, and we mash them. And we liked that little bit of clump that, that unmashed potato was in there. That was mashed potatoes. The only way I knew about it. What else do we have? You know, you had all the desserts. I think it was chocolate cakes and chocolate pies. It wasn't so much apple pies. It was chocolate pies. Uh, a lot of homemade things. Probably was apple pie. And uh, peach cobbler. Let's see, what else? Um, uh, for the staple food, uh, there was the turkey, the mashed potatoes, the green beans, the stuffing, 
and the cranberry. Uh, of course, there was corn. You had to have corn. And it was cream corn. We never had kernel corn like people have the can today, like Green Giant, you know. It was cream corn. My grandmother, she grew corn, and we would cut it off the off the uh, the uh, the husk. No, that's that's the skin. The uh, the cob, cut it off the cob, and we would go in his big silver tubs uh, on her farm in Alabama, and then she would can it in those mason jars and put them in that hot water that would seal that that little thin lid, you know, and put the ring on it, and she'd get a can of that or a jar of that, I should say every day or two and uh, pour it out and heat it up. And it was just as good as the day we, we cut it off. And none of the starch had built up in it. It was cream corn, sweet cream corn, delicious. And there's a big difference between eating good homemade and fresh grown food that doesn't have all the sprays and stuff on it. I mean, the taste was different. The, the Thanksgiving dinners, that's what I miss about them compared to today. I've had them. I'm blessed. I've had them. I know the difference. I know the difference in how a turkey tastes, a ham tastes, mashed potatoes taste, and everything else, and homemade desserts. Um, what else did we get? It was the green beans, the corn, mashed potatoes, uh, and I don't know what kind of a, a type of turkey you like, you know, brown meat or white meat. I like it both. I like, I like even with chickens, I, I, I eat both. I eat both. And uh, I, I'm an easy palate. I, I eat anything. <laughs> I really do. I learned that. Uh, my dad, my stepfather raised me and he always said, uh, let me get it right. I don't want to mess it up. We'd sit, we'd sit at the table when we were kids. We were a bunch of hogs. All we wanted to do was eat a lot. And, uh, you know, because it was good food. And he would say, uh, eat, take what you want, but eat what you take. And you had to clean your plate before you got any dessert. There was none of this, you know, you, you got served and then they, you know, you didn't want it all because you just wanted to eat dessert. That wasn't the way I was raised. You had to clean your plate. It wasn't a punishment. You know, they didn't put any more on your plate than, than you could eat. But some kids, you know, they would try to, I don't want that. And they want to get to the dessert, right? No, no. I was raised differently. You, uh, you had to finish your, your, your plate. And let's see, what else? Um, what other foods were there? You can tell me in the comments that I'm that I'm forgetting. That's like the staples. It seems like there's something else that you know that you had. You had the turkey. Thanks. Let me go over it again. Turkey, cranberry, corn, mashed potatoes. Uh, there was always dinner rolls or biscuits or uh, um, the brown and serve rolls. That was uh, that was something that we had too. I remember uh, dinner rolls. Yeah, you had bread. Uh, you know, growing up, some of the best bread on the table, speaking of bread and, and everything, uh, we had bread on the table with every meal. This is not during Thanksgiving. I'm just kind of remembering stuff. We ate white bread, sliced bread. We would take out a handful of bread and put it on a saucer on the table, uh, just a stack of white sliced bread. And our butter would never go in the refrigerator. It was always soft in a butter tray, it was covered. And we would take a butter knife or what we call a case knife. And, uh, or there actually is a little butter knife. They have a, I know my friends, uh, Fred and Raffaella over in Sarasota, she actually still uses a butter knife. She's got some cool little dishes. Anyway, we would spread butter. There's nothing better than that. Butter on a white, on a slice of white bread with your meal. So that was our bread. Um, and then I'm going to go off on a tangent here, but of course, uh, when it comes to bread, I ha I can't go without saying how I was raised on cornbread and the cornbread that I ate wasn't this box stuff that tastes like cake. We had it in a black iron skillet. The skillet was superheated with a bunch of lard that melted, made a nice little amount of oil. And then the cornbread mix homemade was poured into that and a big thick crust was formed on the bottom and then it was cornmeal martha white um we had white cornmeal and it was in a big cast iron skillet and it was done when the bottom side 
is brown. And then you would turn it over on a plate. And I'm talking not a thin little old cheap crust. I'm talking that brown. It was dark brown. And it was a thick crust with that steamy, hot, delicious, white, Martha White cornmeal um, cornbread in the middle. And although people like cornbread and butter, I ate my cornbread after our meal. It kind of like a dessert. I was raised on cornbread milk. Who's ever eaten cornbread and milk? We would take cornbread and not in a bowl. I would have to have it in my milk glass because we always drink milk with dinner. I haven't drank milk in a long time, but I was raised on milk. I would break the cornbread up, make sure I got plenty of that crunchy stuff too, in my milk glass, a glass glass, and then top it off with the milk and eat it with a spoon out of a glass. There was just something different about it. I didn't want a bowl, although you could do that. And we had sliced tomatoes on the table a lot. And so I would even put a couple of diced up uh, sliced tomatoes in my cornbread milk. Not every time, but I did. And I know this is like way off the subject of the Thanksgiving meal, but while I'm talking about food, it's all coming back to me. Grits. Who's, when, who, who's been raised on grits? You don't, they don't know how to spell grit in Florida, but I had grits offered to me. Uh, well, you can still get it at, at Cracker Barrel, I guess, anywhere, and I always do. But up in Georgia, I mean, grits were like everywhere, you know, in the Waffle House and things like that. We only had, and it wasn't no instant grits. It was grits that took 15, 20, 25 minutes to cook. And we had grits with cheese in it. We had grits with tomato, um, uh, puree, tomato, what do they call that? Tomatoes in there, uh, cheese and tomatoes. But most of the time it was just grits. And listen to this. When we had our grits, it wasn't in a bowl like it was a separate little thing to eat, although you could, and it's fine. I was raised to pour my grits or put my eggs on top of my grits. It was grits and eggs every morning, grits and eggs, grits and eggs. And we would dice up the, the egg, you know, all the yolk would run into the, uh, to the grits. And I didn't even use the butter much because the yolk made the color in it and the white egg. There's nothing better than eating the grits with that egg in it. Love it. I could eat some right now because it's early in the morning. Oh, let me have another sip of my coffee. So anyway, I remember before microwaves. I remember before computers. I remember when phones had cords on them. I remember when it was a lot, you know, no cell phones, no beepers. I remember all of that. We had a pay phone on every corner and uh, we had answer machines at home. And that's the life that I kind of grew up in. And we rode around everywhere on 10 speed bikes. Here in Lake Worth, Florida, where I grew up and went to high school, class of 77, I'll bet I put 10,000 miles on a 10-speed bike. We went everywhere on our bikes. I'm just all over the place this morning, folks. I'm kind of reminiscing. That's what you do when you get older. And you start looking at your life and you think, man, that was just yesterday. You know, those Christmases where you come out and all the toys are unwrapped and Santa Claus left them. We talked about that on a video before. The Thanksgivings, when people came over, it was all football. And I know they do the football game still. It was all football games. Um, we, we, uh, what time did we eat? That's another thing that's changed, I think. Uh, did we eat earlier or did we eat later? I'm really, I'm really, um, I want to say we ate earlier because the turkey started cooking the night before and it was, you know, like lunchtime after lunch, you know, one, two, three, I don't know, something like that. Or was it late in the day? Well, whatever time it was, is not really important. I'm sure it was various times growing up that I really can't remember, but I just wanted to um, kind of reminisce with you guys a little bit. I know a lot of you that watch me are my age and can remember a lot of things I'm talking about. I sure would like to read the comments about you know, your experiences and how you celebrated some of the dishes you made 
and what time you started cooking your turkey. I know a lot of people said uh, shortly after the dressing in the bird uh, that it was poisoning you or could poison you or whatever. And maybe it's true. Maybe it's true. But it didn't kill me all the years that uh, we did it. But I don't think that's a very popular thing today. So, and you know, a lot of things that we used to do in, in ignorance, we don't do today. I remember when people used to throw trash out their window, you'd be following them in your car. They just toss their trash right out and nobody would think anything about it. Isn't that crazy? So a lot of things that we shouldn't have done, you know, that we did do, uh, that were not good. But anyway, foods are great. Now, today, what do we have in 2023 on a daily basis? It's fast food. It's a sandwich. Uh, when I grew up on my grandmother's farm, we didn't call lunch lunch. It was it was uh, it was supper, or was it dinner? One of them was referred to lunch, and then the other one was the dinner. I think supper was lunch. And my grandmother, she would make a lot of hot foods. You know, there would be um, green beans and mashed potatoes, cream corn, a lot of vegetables, a lot of healthy foods that she grew. You know, it wasn't like, here, here's your bologna sandwich, or uh, let's go down to the deli and have them make us a roast beef sandwich or a poor boy. And uh, breakfasts were not a bowl of cereal. It was the biscuits and the eggs and the grits and all that. And then dinner, a lot of the stuff that was left over from supper was added to maybe a fried pork chop or a chicken. And, you know, they would they would harvest one of their own chickens. They'd, they'd kill a chicken and make their own chickens and make fried chickens. Um, they would, they had pigs, you know, th they'd make their own uh, ribs and stuff like that, and bacon, and they had a couple of cows, they'd get their beef, you know, and they'd bring out something like that. But a lot of times, believe me, I, I think we just had vegetables, you know, maybe some chicken. And it was like, you didn't even miss the meat. The vegetables were so good, the green beans, the mashed potatoes, the cream corn, oh, and fried okra. I'm going to end the video now because this is going on too long. But fried okra, burnt. I'm talking crispy fried okra. I love, love, love it. And that would be part of the, the dinner, you know, and we'd even have that for supper uh, during the middle of the day. Maybe some cornbread or that uh, big pile of white sliced bread with the butter. So anyway, I'm going to make a video now about Social Security. That'll be coming out later. Uh, for all those that are considering retiring soon, maybe you're in your 50s or you're about to turn 62 and you're debating on the fact whether you should collect it or not, we're going to go over that. And the new numbers are out uh, that might surprise you about uh, what I've talked about before, about the break-even point. Uh, so there's some new variables uh, regarding that, so we'll get into that a little bit too. So make sure you stay tuned for that video. But right now, I got to start up this truck and turn the air conditioning on because it's hot here in South Florida. That sun is crushing it. 